Good morning, Modern Steaders. Oh, it's a beautiful morning out. 57 degrees. It's a nice dew on the grass. The pigs are hungry. So is CWC. One of the things I never realized the pigs would do is this bank was very steep. They're actually tapering this down nicely for us. We'll be able to walk down it. You guys are doing a good job. Let's put it over here, see if we can get you to get this little shrub brush down. Oh, that barn's looking so nice. I love the trim work by the window. Morning, girls. I see you licking your chops there, but Blossom. I always get Blossom and Buttercup mixed up. The names are too close. Huh, Buttercup. Ready right, for some food? Today we're gonna start enclosing the left side Eve overhang. This is gonna be the side where the goat stalls are gonna be, and the milking parlor, and the feed room. We get to customize stuff, guys. Yesterday we did some trim work, and we ran to the local sawmill and got some lumber. I'll put a link to that video right here. And today we get to start using some of that lumber. The barn's gonna take on a whole new look once we get the Eve overhangs all sided in. Thank you, Willow. There you are, Hope. Kiddos. What are you doing? Not in too much of a rush to get out this morning? No? Magnolia, Little P, and Little Man are doing really well weaning from Willow and eating hay. It's amazes, it just amazes me how much hay they can eat for being three little goats. Did you get all the good stuff, Hope? You did, didn't you? Yeah. CWC, come on. You're killing me here lately. You were just at the pigs eating over there. <sighs> no wonder why our feed bill keeps going up. Come on. All right, now we get to start customizing our goat stall area. So whatever we do from here on out, basically on this side of the barn is all customized. This did not come with the kit. We gotta do the um, trim work, that came with the kit, but the siding and the doors and stuff, that's all gonna be custom made. So we need to figure out layout for our door. Let's grab our level, grab a couple of clamps, a pencil, and tape measure. Right, I wanna figure out where I can put my door. So, let's figure out, let's see. Let's check out something. So if we go 10 and 3 quarters from there, and if we did, Thirty-eight would be roughly there. 
So let's figure out how high our door can be. So right there would be the top of our, oops, the top of our doorway. That, and I can put a clamp there. So let me go get this oops we can go right there and then we'll clamp it here okay so we'd go from there down and from there down would be our door We're gonna have 83 inches. All right. I need to take off one piece of siding. And it's gonna make it a lot easier and the finished job look a lot nicer. One of those new fancy oscillating saws that go like this would work really good for this part, but we don't have one. So I think I can get my grinder to work. I wanna take down this piece of siding. The reason I'm taking off this piece of siding is it's only six inches wide. These are 12 inches. So if I take this one off, I can put a 12 inch piece of siding here and it'll continue it into this part of the barn and it'll make all the siding look the same and give it a nice flow. All right, so now we need some other stuff. Right here. There we go. I know I hate having to take apart stuff that I already put on, but it's gonna make it for a better product for what we're doing. We use ring shank nails, so they're, they hold pretty good, which is a good thing. You don't want them to come out easy. Get our ladder out of the way. Look at that, that worked nicely. I like it. And we're able to salvage the board. We can use it somewhere else or use it for something else. Our next floor will be able to go up flush to that and you won't even be able to tell that we made that change. All right, let's get a measurement from here to there. 91 and a half. All right, now we can cut down our pressure treated two by four. Ok, 
keep the scrap PT somewhere else because we don't want to burn that. give it its final tap. I like that right there. Let's get this into place. Nice. We grab this. On the line there need our level let's plumb it up like so awesome Now we can start making layout for our door. There we go. This is the part that's going to take a little bit of time. It's just getting everything figured out so it works out the way we want it to. this mark so our siding falls right our next piece is going to come out to 10 inches 10 inches mark it on the bottom let's put a line here so we can go off of that so it's going to come to next two by right there. So 81 and a half. Eighty-one and a half. I'll use this one right here. That ends good. A nice little window would be nice there. I don't have anything in mind or have a window, but while we're building it, we'll keep in mind that later on, we could always add a window. That'd be kind of cool looking.
one. Just sucked it up a lot nicer. I like it. Boy, I'm thinking a window would look really nice there, guys. Leave it in the comments down below and let me know. We can always add it in after if we need to. But, oh, that would look so beautiful. Door, window. Whew. Oh, it's all coming together now. Sure is. So I want to put our nailer the same position off the ground. So 43 and 3 quarters. And this way we're always the same. That works perfect. It's right to the top of that. Couldn't ask for any better. Alright, so. Actually, you know what? Do I want to double this one up? So let's leave that for a minute. Let's cut one more to this height. One of the jobs I had before we moved back to Massachusetts for a while, 81 and 3 eighths. I worked at a factory making high-end furniture. I started off in the rough sawn lumber part. We'd get rough sawn lumber in and I'd have to plane it down to the thickness and rip it to all the widths. And while I was doing that, it was I was working with cherry. So I'd have to cut out any of the sap wood and stuff like that. And starting off there, I learned a lot about wood and what is acceptable and not acceptable. Then I went from there and I started assembling the furniture after a while. And then after that, they needed somebody in the finishing department and I grew up in a body shop. So I worked in the finishing room, finishing the furniture. We did oil finishes and we did um, like lacquers and stuff. So I did that. I went back to assembly. I went to sanding. The only job I never had. Wow, look at that. I forgot to cut the angle. The only position I never held there was the CNC position. Other than that, I had done all the positions. So that's one of the ways I've learned a lot of my woodworking skills is I picked them up on the job. And I've always done building, something I've kind of learned. We bought a, like a teardown house. It was our first house. I mean, we had to take out the floor rafters and so much. Should be 14, yep. And I learned how to build the house that way. And then when we sold that house, the next house we bought was a foreclosure. That was in terrible condition. We rehabbed that one. And then we bought this one, which was a burned down house actually, believe it or not. And we have rebuilt this whole house again from scratch. 
That's gotta be perfect right there. All right, let's flush this all up. So everything I've learned, it's just been trial and error watching people. My dad did a lot of stuff at his house, at our house growing up. My grandfather was a carpenter when I was younger and I'd watch him do work. So it's like it's just been seeing other people and then trial and error. And I think that's the best way to, that's the best way to learn for me. I'm super visual. I'm not a book person. I shouldn't say that. I enjoy reading, but I can't read something and then know how to do it right away. I still have to figure it out as I work. It's gonna be perfect, guys. This is gonna look so nice. So now we can transfer that mark here and then do that. All right, so that one's gonna come here. For our length, we need just a whisker under 47. So 46 and 15 sixteenths. I wonder if we got it here. It'll be too easy. Let's see. Ah, yeah. 44 and three quarter, just shy. Okay, so we gotta go get another new two by. Let's grab another eight footer, which is right here. Forty-six, fifteen, sixteenths. The last full-time position I had, I worked for a custom home builder and he taught me a lot of tips and tricks by watching and learning him. You can learn so much by watching and learning people. That's how I learn the best. And a lot of it for me also is the person's personality. This guy was very patient and very calm. It's nice to be able to learn from somebody like that. Even if they're not per se teaching, you're just watching and learning. You can learn so much and I did. don't want these. Oh, unfortunately, I'm gonna take them off. It's gonna make a lot nicer look if we take them off and run the siding right up. we're ready to cut our first piece to length. I'm gonna rip it down to 10 inches and let me figure out an overall length. Ah, bummer. That is just over eight feet. I bet you. The highest point, nope, we're, to the highest point we're going to be eight feet. That works out. Awesome. If you guys are in the market for tools, if you can find used tools, 
you can pick them up for like half price. Uh, that's how I got this table saw. And no, DeWalt does not sponsor the channel. But I tell you what, guys, they make the best table saw. Let me show you why. So, usually you gotta do this and this and this with the DeWalt. You go, boom. You got your dial right here. 10, three quarters of an inch. Look, already. Okay, so we're going to the wrong one. We need to come back here. 10 and three quarters of an inch to the white one. 10 and three quarters, 10 and three quarters. You don't have to square up your fence. Lock it in place. Boom. Look at that. I love that table saw. The Walt knew what they were doing when they made that. Our roof is an 812, so our angle is going to be 30, 40 degrees. So we need to do it like so. That'll be perfect. Look at that, huh? Would you look at that? There's two big bows a little bit here and there, so let's straighten that out with the siding. I like it right there. Put it in. Keep that nice and flush. I like that a lot, guys. Yeah, it's gonna look nice. All right, so we're gonna need sixteen. This. This. This one to the high side I said was 16. So 16. Okay, so now if we measure this side. We are 13 and 3 eighths. That's what this side's going to be. Oops, sorry. 13 and 3 eighths. this and I do believe we can do one more over the door as a shorty right. I need this one first
I like it. Clean that up just a little bit. And if you're saying, Al, your siding's not all the same color. This is whiter, this is bleached or yellowed from the sun. This is fresh sawn, so this will yellow up and catch up. Like this trim isn't quite as yellow as this. It's because it's newer. So it'll all catch up and look the same. We could always, if we don't like it, I could bleach the outside when we're done. And that would bring it all back to the same. All right, so. Let's get it flush on the bottom. Ah, we're out of nails. Bummer. Out of nails. Oh, that means we get the hand nail. Here we go. Yeah. All hand nail because I need to go to the hardware store. I didn't do that yet, guys. Should have got them yesterday. worked perfectly guys that's nice and tight I like it wedge back down look at that nice and tight Let's see how that works now oh that's perfect I like it to get all of the wood under cover. That's for the back wall. I hear the goats. I think the pigs are napping inside. Right here. Oh, I see their ears. I don't got the feed. Go see Livy's. They said, oh, she's got it. I'm gonna check and see how their water's doing. Let's make sure they got plenty of water. Oh yeah, they do. No loose chickens today. Wow, it surprises me. How many eggs do you think I'm gonna get? Um, 18. 18. Oh, two. 
five, six, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Boy, does it feel good to start getting some siding on the left side eave overhang. I'm going to be customizing this now and getting the goat area made up. Once we get another rainy day, I'll work on the barn door, uh, the overhead door for the main part of the barn and the transom window. But I figure while we have some nice weather, we might as well take advantage of it and get the left side all sided up. Man, it is going to look nice and I can't wait to see it all finished. It's going to make it look so different. Thanks guys for coming along on our journey with us. You are a huge blessing to us in our homestead and we're finally getting into some summer weather here in New Hampshire, which is nice and it seems like everybody else has been pretty warm. So I hope you, hope you guys are staying cool and safe and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, the guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency and freedom.